Welcome to Coding Kids. Today I'm going to show you how to build this game. Knight collects the coins in the castle. First, let's look at how we play it. The player controls the knight by pressing the up, down, left and right arrow keys to make the knight move around the screen. The aim of the game is to collect all the coins and the money bag by touching them with the knight. When you collect all the coins and the money bag, you win. However, you also need to avoid running into the ghost because if you touch the ghost, you lose. Now, let's build the game. There are seven parts to the game. One, the backdrop. Two, the knight. 3. The ghost, 4. The coins, 5. The money bag, 6. You win, and 7. You lose. Now, let's start building one step at a time. First, let's start with a brand new project by clicking the Create button on the home page. As you can see, a new project will open with the cat sprite as the default sprite. A sprite is a character or object that we use in making the computer program. Let's delete the cat sprite. For step one, let's add the backdrop. Click on the miniature backdrop icon at the bottom of the screen. Then scroll through the backdrop library until you find a backdrop that you like. You may choose a different backdrop to me. Double click on the backdrop you have selected to set it as your backdrop. Now our game has a backdrop. Title this backdrop as Castle. For step two, let's import a new sprite into our workspace. Select a new sprite from the sprite library. I want to use the Knight sprite, but you may choose to use a different sprite to me. You can resize the sprite to make it bigger or smaller if you like. I want my sprite to be a bit smaller. To do this, use the Shrink icon in the toolbar at the top and click on the sprite until it's the size that you want. Now we want to add some code to our knight sprite. To do this, make sure the knight is selected and then open the scripts tab, which is at the top center of the page near the stop sign. We need our knight to move when we press the arrow keys. To do this, let's use the block when space key pressed. Drag four of these blocks into the workspace. Now click on the drop down arrow to change the space key to left arrow key, right arrow key, up arrow key and down arrow key for each of these event blocks. Now we need to add the motion blocks to these event blocks. We know that to move up and down we use the Y axis and to move left and right we use the X axis. To make the knight move up with the up arrow, we need to choose a block that says change Y by 10 from the motion category. Now connect it to the block that says when up arrow key pressed to activate it. Let's test it out. It works! Repeat this for each of the arrow keys, but make sure to remember the down and left use negative 10 in the motion block instead of positive 10. Let's test our code. Great, it works. Now we can move the knight around the screen. For step three, we're going to create and code our ghost sprite. First, let's import a new sprite into our workspace. I will select a new sprite from the sprite library. I want to use the ghost sprite, but you may choose to use a different sprite to me. The ghost sprite is a bit different to the knight sprite because the ghost sprite isn't controlled by a player. Instead, the motion of the ghost is automated, meaning it happens all by itself. We want our ghost to move as soon as the game begins. To do this, drag the event block when green flag clicked into the workspace. Now we need to code how the ghost will move. The ghost sprite is moving forwards but turning randomly between each movement. To code for this, let's grab a move 10 steps block and put it under the when green flag clicked block. Next, select a turn clockwise block and put it under the move 10 steps block. 
Instead of getting our sprite to rotate 15 degrees, we want it to randomly choose between rotating 5 degrees clockwise or negative 5 degrees clockwise. This is also known as 5 degrees anti-clockwise. To do this, let's get the pick random 1 to 10 block from the operator's category and change the numbers to negative 5 and 5. To make sure the ghost sprite continues to move for the duration of the game, let's put a forever loop which is found in the control category over our blocks. Next, let's make sure the ghost won't disappear when it's on an edge. To do this, add the block if on edge bounce inside the forever loop and then add a wait one second from the control category to control the speed the ghost moves at. I will change my waiting time to 0.15 seconds. Finally, let's give our ghost a starting point. To do this, use the motion block, go to x, y. My ghost will start at x equals 190, y equals 138. Let's test our code. Great, our ghost moves just like we want it to. For step 4, we're going to create and code for our coin sprites. First, let's draw a new sprite. To do this, go to the paintbrush icon located next to the sprite library icon. To paint a coin, draw a circle with the circle feature and then add a dollar sign. The coin sprites are objects that we collect during the game to give us points. They can do this because we have assigned the variable money to them. To create a variable, go into the data category and click on the make a variable. Let's call this variable money and click OK. Make sure you can see a check mark next to the variable money. This makes sure we can see our score during the game. Now that we have created the variable money, let's start coding for how our knight and coins interact with each other. In the game, the variable money only increases when the knight touches the coin. After the knight touches the coin, the coin disappears. First, we need a when green flag clicked block to start our code. Next, we want to find an if then loop from the control category. This allows us to make a decision about when our score will increase, as we only want our score to increase if the knight is touching the coin. To code for this, select the block called Touching Knight from the Sensing category and put it into the top of the If Then block. Now we can put what we want to happen if our knight is touching the coin inside our If Then loop. We want the variable money to increase by 1 and we want the coin to hide. To do this, find the block Change Money by 1 in the Data category and Hide from the Looks category and then put them inside the If Then loop. We need a forever loop around our If Then loop to ensure that the condition is being checked continuously. You can find the forever loop in the Control category. Finally, to make sure we can see our coin when we restart the game, add a Show block beneath the When Green Flag Clicked block. Let's test our code. Great, our coin disappears and our score increases by one when the knight touches the coin. Now that we have one coin that works, we want to duplicate our coin so that we can have five coins. To do this, select the stamp icon at the top of the screen and click on the coin sprite. Do this four times to create five coin sprites. Now we have five sprites, but all of them are randomly positioned on the screen. To make sure they go where you want, add a go to x, y block to each coin. Make sure the coordinates are unique for each of them so they aren't on top of each other. For 
For step 5, we're going to create and code for our money bag sprite. First, let's draw a new sprite. To do this, go to the paintbrush icon located next to the sprite library icon. Use the paintbrush to create a money bag shape. The code for our money bag is almost exactly the same as the code for our coins, so we can use some of our code from before to create our money bag code. First, let's copy the code we used for our coin sprite. To do this, open a coin sprite and drag the code down to hover over the money bag sprite. Drop it on the money bag sprite. This puts the code from the coin into the money bag workspace. Now we need to change the amount our money bag changes the variable money by because the money bag is worth more than the coins. Change the 1 in change money by 1 to a 5. We also need to change the position of our money bag so that it is unique. Change the coordinates in the go to x y block so that they are different to all of your coins. For step 6, we're going to create the backdrop for you win and code for how that happens. First, select the stage image located in the bottom left hand corner. Now go to the backdrops tab and right click on your current backdrop. Click on duplicate so you can have a copy of your original backdrop. Now add the text you win to this picture by using the text function. Title this backdrop, You Win. Now open up the Scripts tab again and drag out a When Green Flag Clicked block. You can only win the game if you have collected all of the coins and the money bag. When you have collected all the items, the variable money will be equal to 10. To code this, let's use an If Then loop and an Equal block from the Operator category. Drag the equal block into the top of the if then loop. Inside the equal block, drag the block money from the data category and in the other side, type 10. Now we can code for what happens when the variable money equals 10. When money equals 10, you win. Add the block change backdrop to you win from the looks category and underneath the block stop all from the control category. Make sure you put a forever block around the if then loop so that the condition is always being checked. And lastly, add the block switch backdrop to castle and set money to zero beneath the when green flag clicked block. For step 7, we're going to create the backdrop for you lose and code for how that happens. First, select the stage image located in the bottom left hand corner. Now go to the Backdrops tab and right click on your current backdrop. Click on Duplicate so you can have a copy of your original backdrop. Now add the text You Lose to this picture by using the text function. Title this backdrop You Lose. Now select your Night Sprite and drag a when green flag clicked block into the workspace. Just like for the you win scenario, the you lose scenario only happens if the ghost is touching the knight. Therefore, we need an if then loop and a touching ghost block. Click these two blocks together and place them under the event block. Inside our if loop, we want to use the switch backdrop to you lose block found in the looks category. Place this block inside the if then loop. When you lose the game, all motion should stop. Therefore, we also want the stop all block found in the control category. Put this underneath switch backdrop. Finally, we want our condition to be checked forever. So add a forever loop around the if then loop. Now let's click on the green flag to test our game. It 
it works. Add your own features like music or timers to personalise the game.